Okay, okay, there we go. All right, good. So thank you all for, for, for this. Uh, I hope we're all keeping well. We want to get started now. Um, I have a special guest with me, but uh, just before we do that, I just wanted to uh, let you all know that uh, we're just having this short session for just, a, I don't know, about an hour this evening, just to talk about some, topic, some topical issues uh, where men and fatherhood are, are concerned. So I just want to give my guest an opportunity to introduce herself and just tell us a little bit about what she does. Go ahead. Hi, everybody. I thank you very much, um, Wongera, for the invitation to Papa Bear Talks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my name is Joki Wamai. Uh, you can call me Joki. And I am a, first I'm an academic, I am an assistant professor at USIU, I teach international relations and politics. But beyond that, I'm also uh, somebody very interested in human rights uh, and gender. I've, I've actually also studied gender at one point and, and how gender roles influence how we live. And I'm also very interested and passionate about, about uh, about parenting and how and 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 how we as uh, and how and how parents and other people are likely to influence parenting based on 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 their their thinking about even themselves and then so i'm all i'm very it's it's largely about developmental psychology which is something i'm just passionate on the side so but I've done scholarship around, of course, politics, international relations, and gender. And that's why I am here as an expert on gender, gender relations. And I'm looking forward to enjoy this. Okay. okay. Great. Thank you so much. I mean, uh, it was so interesting to interact, interact with you um, after the, uh, the session that we did last week, last weekend, on uh, just leading up to Father's Day. We did a session with uh, a few other gentlemen. About um, just about Father's Day, about raising future fathers, about what we learned from our fathers. And, you know, you were, I know you were, you were participant in that, and you, you know, you gave your feedback, and that's how we started interacting on this, on this issue of fatherhood and, and men and all. And um, you know, it's it's very interesting because our topic today is is it about precisely that. It's about gender roles and uh, the modern the modern family or today's parent. And you know, as we'll see in in the next few minutes, that. You know the gender roles uh, have been sort of defined or set by society, um, and they're affecting the way people are raising their kids. Um, and we just want to explore that a little bit. Uh, some of it is good, a lot of it is is not really very healthy. But we just want to to briefly talk through that. Um, and you know, just I mean, for those who are joining us, the the this is an initiative. Of Papa Bear, Papa Bear is uh, is a project. Uh, if I could call it that, to encourage exceptional fatherhood. And we want to be having um, discussions like this with, with experts in different fields, in different disciplines, who will just go back and forth around some of the topics that affect men and affect fathers, uh, just so we can get an expert view. If you have any questions, please feel free to chat them up uh, in, the, in the chat box um, for this, for this, uh, for this live call. Um, some of you know me personally, if you want to hit me up on WhatsApp, just have, if you have any questions, please do. Um, but uh, let's let's have this conversation uh, moving forward. So I just want to start talking by, by just asking you, um, and we've, we've done a, sort of like a few questions that we wanted to walk through today. What what exactly is gender? You know, you know, we say gender. We talk about the word gender. It's sometimes used um, to refer specifically to women. Uh, but you know, what what in your in your opinion is um, is gender and some of these gender roles in society? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Very good question. I, gender is a socially constructed, there are socially constructed ideas about what is to be a man and what is to be a woman. Uh, people also refer is, them as socially constructed ideas about masculinity, which is what is to be a man, and femininities. So, and societies change, you know, and it's and you find also these ideas are very different from one society to another. It could be an ethnic group to another. Even class, people of different classes may have diff assigned uh, different gender 
roles and ideas around what is to be a man than the other. So it's, it's, it's one thing we need to note about gender roles. They are dynamic. They also change with time. So what was to be a man in 1920 in Kenya? Mm -hmm. And, you know, in Kenya, of course, was an idea. So maybe what was to be a man about among the Kikuyu people or Luo people or Trukana people? Mm -hmm. Can we use that? What is to be a man now? Where women are going to work. Mm -hmm. You know, so many things have changed. Of course, mm -hmm. some of those will remain. And I know that's where our identity as men, as women, we, we hold on to. But gender is dynamic. Mm -hmm. So you find what to be a woman, for instance, for me as a Mugikoyo woman, in the 1940s, a woman had to go through female genital cutting. At That's GM, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Meru's, you know? Mm -hmm. That is not uh, to be a woman now. I don't need that, you see? Yeah, so yeah. people have to understand gender roles change with time. And we need to move with the times because uh, what does not change is sex. Mm -hmm. And people kind of tend to conflate the two. So gender is socially constructed or socially assigned roles by society, yep. which change with time, which could be, um, which reflect where society is at that time. But sex does not change. Sex is biology. I have mm. breasts yeah. that can breast. Somebody else doesn't, a man does, may not has breasts, but they, they're not going to be so Exactly the same the, way, yeah. Exactly. That's the only thing that doesn't, sex doesn't change. And many times we assign and we, we conflate the two and we say, you know, but men are supposed to be like this. Women are supposed to be like that. Yeah. The only things that don't change are sex and, mm -hmm. and uh, what is biologically you know, our biological roles, but yeah. the rest is all dynamic. Yeah, yeah. I think we, 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 we struggle with that. I mean, especially as men, because mm -hmm. the society, the society's need or uh, engagement with men has changed over, over time. I mean, yeah. uh, I like what you said, you know, um, a, a, a man in the 1950s uh, was a very different, uh, the, the need for that man was very different. I mean, the men were going in some places of this country, were going to fight for independence. They were out in the, in the, in the forest. Um, yeah. And so that whole macho, masculine, ready to, to die for his woman sort of vibe was, was necessary. It was part of being a man back then. Um, yeah. I don't know if that is needed in today's uh, day and age, you know, when we talk about the role of a man being, say, a protector. You know, mm -hmm. certainly there are times when you do need to physically ward off some sort of attack. But that happens yeah. extremely rarely. Um, for the most mm -hmm. part, life is pretty standard. You know? So unless you're, a, you're in the security forces, you're a policeman or a, or a security guard or something, the chances of yeah. you needing to fight someone off is, uh, is next, to, next to zero. So I, yeah. I find that men uh, struggle with their identity uh, in mm -hmm. today's world. And not just yeah. men, but fathers specifically. Um, yeah. Sometimes we find it difficult to adjust to what society expects of us. Because yes. the gender role um, has been told to us and it's yeah. being told from a different perspective, from a time when the father's role was very different from what it is today. And that makes us struggle as, as, as men. Yeah. 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 I agree. I agree. And I think that's why we need to start. Um, we talked about companies like Kodak in the corporate world that refuse to move with the times, you know? Um, and how, and, and what happens? You see, like now Kodak is no more. They refuse to go digital. Now it's when they're trying to come up when so many other people have come on board. Yeah. Even uh, those people who love literature, this uh, Okonko, Okonko mm. in Solar Part, mm. you see? With his ideas of masculinity, a very tough man who was killing lions and animals and what. And mm. then he gets a son who is so different and he doesn't know what to do with this son. Yeah. But Okonkwo eventually even murdered himself because, I mean, not murdered, he, he committed suicide. suicide. Because, yeah. because he, couldn't, he couldn't move with, of course, colonialism came, which was quite traumatic experience. 
but he could not move with this new uh, times that, that came to Iboland and he killed himself because he could not cope with the new world. And so the thing, because gender roles, I think we need to understand first, they are not static as much as we tend, and that's why many men, even women struggle because yeah. we have already been assigned this role. We've been told from since we are young and that's why parenting becomes important. Yeah. There are certain expectations of what is a man. A mm. man is strong. Yeah. So what happens to a man who is not strong? You know, mm. a man is aggressive and bold. Mm. A man is meant to be smart, intelligent. Mm. Yeah. A man is doesn't have emotions. You're supposed to be a stoic, macho. Yeah. You know? A man, a man has to be the one who goes out to get the bread. Yeah. So what happens when you you don't have a job. So you find even women, and then, so those are the many expectations of a dom dominant masculinity, or what is to be a man. Yeah. Our, and sadly, we grow up listening to these things. You're not supposed to have emotion as a man. And then, what are the expectations of what is to be a woman? You're supposed yes. to be perfect, polite, mm -hmm. sweet. Yes, you know? humble, humble, respectful. Respectful, kind, even okay. if you're intelligent, you damn yourself when you're near men so that because men must always be more intelligent than you. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. You must never show you're too intelligent. You know, don't you must be nurturing. Yes. And I have so many even couples where the husband is more nurturing of the children than the wife. It happens. I know of a couple where the, the husband is a stay-at-home dad and the wife works. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. And then passive, women must be passive. Don't be active, you know. Mm. Even you're told, those married people, you're told, you know, don't be very tough when you want to bring up an idea. Just mm. go slowly. Slowly, slowly. Massage. <laughs> but uh, men, men are so fragile, they, they can't take uh, some of these things. Yeah. Exactly. So, so, and then just be average. You know, even if you found a job in, I don't know where, no, you know, you're a natural, stay at home. But the same man will wake up and go and say, hey, sweetheart, yeah. I'm, yes, I'm doing this. Yeah. So these, these different expectations, which we have grown up with, the society around us is telling us, this is what you're supposed to be. It's what now, that's why in fatherhood or men, or even eventually as, as grown adults, as men or women, especially men, they struggle because now this is the script they were given. Mm -hmm. Childhood, the father keeps saying a man must provide. So the poor man, when he lacks a job or yeah. he loses his job, and then the mm -hmm. wife also, a man who can't provide is useless. Yeah, yeah. So she starts treating the guy with Madarao. Mm -hmm. Of course, now the man also... You know, he loses his sense of purpose. That's true. That's very true. It's just chaotic. So yeah. I think all of us, men and women, must realize this: all these gender roles we've grown up with, they're just roles, assigned roles that yeah. are social constructs. Yes. And we need to be making our own roles as we go along, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think there, there's there's so many things that uh, uh, we've grown up seeing our fathers do and believing that that is what men are supposed to do. Um, mm -hmm. and it's not it's not written anywhere. I mean, it's not in the constitution or anything. It's just society yeah. that has decided that uh, yeah. man has to do those things. Uh, some of them were practical considerations that uh, you know your dad had to do A, B, C, D because for just practical mm -hmm. reasons. So it's not necessarily that men or fathers are supposed to do them. But it's just the way, just the way, uh, the way things were at the time, just out of necessity. And I find that a lot of a lot of um, marriages, a lot of relationships, a lot of children are, yeah. are struggling because the men are struggling, the fathers are struggling. Sorry, I have a obviously I have a bias towards fatherhood, so I'm going to skew this in that direction a lot. But I find that yeah. a lot of um, families struggle because um, the, the father has um, lost a sense of purpose and direction because yeah. these societal gender roles have shifted. Yeah. He's, he's finding himself doing stuff that he never thought he would do. He's finding his wife participating in activities where his dad never or his mom never used to touch. And it's, it's confusing. Yeah. 
um, it's causing frustration in the home as well because uh, the wife grew up with certain things being done by her dad. And here's yeah. this guy who grew up in a very different way. And yeah. she's like, what are you doing? Why aren't you taking this up? Why aren't you manning up? Why aren't you handling these issues? Um, and he's yeah. doing it based on what he knows um, best. Uh, and, yeah. and, you know, that's causing a lot of strife in many, in many quarters. Um, I think a lot of men are also, fathers also conflicted because you mm-hmm. feel the urge, the, the paternal urge to, to participate in certain ways and do certain things. But you feel like mm-hmm. you can't or you feel like society is going to frown on you or your friends or your family is going to frown on you. Um, you know, you yeah. don't want to be seen changing diapers, for example, because mm-hmm. you know, your dad never did that. So your mom will be, yeah. will be she'll be livid. She'll be like, why are you letting my son change this, this child's diapers? Um, yeah. But, you know, he has a natural instinct to do so. And there's nothing wrong with a man changing diapers. Um, so I, I, think, I think gender roles, um, as prescribed by society, uh, can be limiting. Um, and I, I really like the example you've given about, uh, you know, Kodak. And there are other examples in, in the corporate space. Uh, Nokia, for example. I mean, they're, they're getting back, but, you know, they missed a whole generation um, of mobile yeah. phone users because they just would not accept reality. Um, and, yes. and, the, and the truth is, when you do not accept change and you do not accept, um, you stick to what has always been done and refuse to yeah. accept the change that's happening around you, then yeah. you become extinct. You you become like the dinosaurs and you're no longer relevant. And that's a yeah. very dangerous thing, that possibility for, for a lot of a lot of men, a lot of fathers, that you yeah. might end up being irrelevant. I mean, your wife can take care of all the bills. She can raise those children on her own. We're seeing so many single mothers doing that today. So then yes. what can we do yeah. as men to break yeah. out of that societal gender role and gender mode yeah. in order to play our role effectively as fathers? Yeah. No, I like that. And I think, I, I think you have really uh, got to the core of the matter that if, I mean, change is inevitable. Change is here, change is inevitable. And the, the more we keep hanging on to, oh, my mother did this, or my mother didn't do that, or my dad did not do that, mm. you need to really decide, are you, if you have a family, is it, is it, are you living with your parents in the house? No. You know, these are the people you committed to work on, to be with for the next many years. And then this is where you need to invest. And actually, if one thing I keep saying, if you look at the advantages of of becoming uh, this man or who is more sensitive, or mm. who shares, who shares, for instance, domestic work, that mm. is one where lots of people have lots of conflicts because mm. many to share domestic jobs they believe i'm providing or mm. and maybe the wife also is providing and also there's this notion that even like moms that work. and there's a bunch of people even who study feminist economists uh, economics and they say the kind of work that if it was to, if these women were to be paid you know they, it would yeah. be so much so mm-hmm. even them, they do a lot of work. So you, it can't be just, you know, we need to just realize we are actually better off yeah. with change. And if you look, if you just even sit down and write two columns, what are the advantages and the disadvantages by yourself? You will see, you know, yeah. anybody yeah. will see. I will have a better relationship with my partner. Yeah. I will nurture children who are not limited you know, to, and who will be actually better partners in the future, yeah. uh, or people who are able to, 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 who are also like Nokia, will, will, won't be like Nokia, they will <laughs> be able to take up the challenges of the future, because you offer that dynamism, and you, yeah. instead of being stuck in that nature, the big debates actually around gender roles, we keep saying is nature versus nurture. Mm. So next, when they say, no, this is the way it should be. That's mm. the way men that's, and women. That's all it's been. And I'm not changing because, but also change is hard, Mwangera. Change is mm. painful. Mm. And especially mm. that kind of emotional change, because it, it's not just say changing, I'll start cooking. It's, mm. uh, you can start cooking, but it's many other things that now need to start changing internally. You to become more vulnerable, you know, mm. 
as a man, you can no longer, women no longer want, say, just functional relationships. A man mm-hmm. who pays for what? They want soulmates, people, a partner, a journey partner. Mm-hmm. How are you able to meet with her with your vulnerability? And it's the only way even children, you teach children to be vulnerable, yeah. and they can be just human beings, even as adults who feel things, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah who are in touch with, with that side. Um, and it's not, yeah. it's, not, it's not a bad thing at all. I mean, um, we sometimes struggle with the word emotion because we consider it to be a feminine thing, or a girly thing. But, you know, ang- anger is an emotion uh, and, and get angry. There's, emotion is not a bad thing. I guess it's how it's, it's, it's handled. Um, and I, I just want to ask you a question. There's a bit more of a technical question now. Um, what, what, what do you think is, is the father's role in helping mm-hmm. to define some of these gender roles and to navigate or to guide the children through mm-hmm. these gender uh, um, roles that, I, uh, that are prescribed by society. You know, what, is, what is the man's role in doing that as a father? Wow, that's very, 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 very good question. I think first we need to understand what can go bad if we continue these um, gender roles that are static. You know, when we keep hanging on to nature, is eventually gender roles become stereotypes, you know, like, mm. and stereotypes are dangerous. How come we have three women governors or I think less than 20 women, uh, women in parliament, not the women members of parliament, the mm-hmm. women, you know, the women who got through the normal constituencies. Mm-hmm. I think there are six out of 200, almost 300 MPs. Why? And yet so many women went to the polls. Why? Mm-hmm. Because eventually our gender roles have become stereotypes mm-hmm. and cause what we call a gender bias. Mm-hmm. So people will say, ah, Atijoki wants to be MP in Nyeri. Ah, don't mind her. You know, women are emotional. The same things that we grew up, you know, they're emotional. Yeah. Yes, it's they can't lead. Like, you know, they can't lead. She's just mm-hmm. pregnant, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. And so and, and so even look at the things that women are told on the campaign trail, or the, you know, mm-hmm. really. So so and it's and it goes from even from say for instance wanting leadership to even careers corporate boardrooms you know yeah the way people women tough women because they are not following the gender script the assigned mm. gender script. you know they are not cool and sweet and you know kind and polite and accommodating they are tough like yeah. what the, the corporate boardroom demands people call her that's a bitch you know yeah like, <laughs> She's so... but a man, I know, but yeah. a man who does the same thing, hey, yeah. that guy, hey, that guy is the guy. You know? It's tough. It's tough. Alpha. Hey, <laughs> Alpha male. <laughs> hey, the beach and nobody yeah. wants. You know, so yeah. so you can see how the the gender roles that we are signing and believing in. Yeah. We start also having bias and stereotypes against other people. Mm. and we limit them yeah so we yeah. limit them also so whether it's in the corporate boardroom or whether it's um, M members of parliament whether it's even just matatus mm. you know see how um, makangas talk to girls it's like mm. you're, you're supposed to be touched as you get in and when she says don't don't yeah. f with me like, yeah 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 oh, step back you're like whoa okay what's what's back off I know. Yeah. So we need to realize how gender roles affect gender stereotype, lead to gender stereotyping, mm-hmm. and eventually gender bias, bias, and eventually discrimination, and eventually mm-hmm. inequality between yeah. men and women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and at all levels, from the household, when you when a wife says she wants to go and study and you're like, ah, no, sweetie, just stay at home, take care mm. of the kid. Mm. When you are not ready to sacrifice for her, but she would sacrifice for you to yeah. develop a career, maybe yeah. which requires you moving countries or moving, you know, jobs or whatever. So all this, even at the household level, when you let the woman do all the work, 
of yeah. nurturing and you, you just sit with your newspaper, you're preventing her maybe from even getting on the internet and reading mm. something yeah. that's offending her CV. So yes. all you need, and so you can imagine or else you have seen even girls, especially in rural areas, where mm. a girl is taking care of the rest of the brothers. Yes. She comes home from school, the boys go out and play and come back and do their homework. She's her and her mom are the ones to clean all the boys' clothes plus her clothes, cook. By the time she's also coming to do her homework, she's yeah. tired. She sleeps. So mm. how do you expect her to get good marks to go to high school? Yeah. Yeah. So when what's those boys, these teenage pregnancies you're hearing about, of course, she's like this might even save me from all the work at home. This mm. man hitting me with sweets or whatever, mm. you know? Mm. Yeah. So we need to see that as a, as, a, as a continuum. You know, gender roles, how they influence stereotyping, they lead to stereotyping. Stereotyping leads to gender bias. Mm -hmm. Gender bias leads to gender, in a, uh, gender discrimination and eventually yeah. inequalities between yeah. men and women. Yes. From the household level to the national level to the world level. Yeah, that's a, yeah. wow. That's a, that's powerful, uh, Joki. You know um, how you know just a simple perception of, of myself as a, as a man, um, and especially as a father of both boys and girls. Um, how some of the things that I I say and some of the ways that I view myself can actually contribute towards the entrenchment of systematic uh, inequality between between genders, which for me is horrifying because um, fine, I might be a beneficiary of the patriarchy because I'm a man, but I have daughters and these yes. girls are gonna go out into the world and they're going to meet um, this system which is an, an equally skewed against them. And mm -hmm. I need to do something about it now. Um, yeah. And you know, I, I, I'm, I'm privileged because I'm managing to interact with people like you and you know, I'm beginning to see things differently. But what, what would you say to, to, to men out there? You know, what can we do uh, as, mm. as fathers to make sure that our sons uh, mm -hmm. begin to see that continuum? You know, mm -hmm. that, that, that process where just the way they define themselves is actually directly connected to inequality in the system. That's going to affect them, that's going to affect their sisters, it's going to affect, has affected their mom, has, it's going to affect their daughters. Um, how can we make our sons see that continuum and begin to change how they do things? How can we as fathers, what can we do differently now to make sure that that doesn't happen? Yeah, no, I like that. So there are many things we can do. And I think one is, is addressing the stereotyping, you know, because we said it's in stages from gender roles, to stereotyping to bias, to inequality and discrimination. So these personality traits that we, these ones we are talking about, when a girl is, is being tough, you're like, hey, I remember in Kikuyu, a, a tough girl even has a, a bad name, Wajakehe, you know? <laughs> what does that mean? I'm not a Kikuyu, what does that mean? I, I don't, it's like, I mean, it's like you are a tomboy, it's a tomboy. It's a derogatory but it's, thing. But it's derogatory. Yeah. Why? Okay. why we should be encouraging girls to climb trees, mm -hmm. you know, to do, to be, actually, to be, you know, yeah. to be. So I think one area we could start with is information of this personality uh, traits and prevent and, and, and challenging these gender roles. Those things we are saying, a girl is sweet and nice and kind and um, she doesn't think too much, she's emotional, whatever, mm. and boys are tough and macho and they don't cry, you know? So I've seen men and mothers tell boys, why are you crying, you know, you, mm. you're a man. Mm. And if you're telling, uh, you are telling a six, seven, eight year old he's a man, he's, a he's man. not. <laughs> he's a boy, he's a little boy, yeah. He's a little boy, a child, and you're, you are taking away his childhood, you know? I've, I've seen funerals where, say the father unfortunately has died and the 15 year old son is being told, now you man up, you know, yeah. now you're the man of the house. The man of the Hell house. No. no. Hell no, you know? Yeah, yeah. He's a boy, for heaven's sake. 
Yeah. And the mother is there. She doesn't need a tiny little boy man to be. Yeah. She's she's okay. Yeah. Yeah. She's an adult woman. Yeah. So we need the way we talk, the way we talk. Is it the Bible that says when even speech, the way a parent talks to a child, it's powerful. Mm. You know? Yeah, there's power, there's life, there's power in the tongue. In the, um, life is in the power of the tongue. Yes, there's, 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 there's power in the tongue. So we need, to be, we need to be more deliberate. And we need, when boys cry, hug them. And you know, it's okay, you know? Yeah. And let's nurture that. Let's nurture this. Because when children are children, before I teenage, they... They are just children. They'll yeah. do anything, whether boy, girl. It's us who start. Actually, uh, they call it a tabula rasa. They are a clean page. Mm. 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 It's us who start writing those things, those yes. gender words. Yes, it's it's uh, then, it's very sorry, sorry. No, go on. Please go on. Please go on. Please go on. And then, and then they go to school, and if and so those are also maybe conversations parents, fathers or parents need to have with even the teachers who are teaching their young children about yeah. this gender role. Because you could be teaching him all the nice things, but he goes to school and he's told, no, you are a man, a small little man, you know? <laughs> yeah. And men don't cry. So, yeah. and then also we talk about that school, in Kenya especially, the public school and bullying in high school. Mm -hmm. That that's the that destroys our boys totally. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. gives them trauma for the rest of their lives, and they move around with this thing of, of you know. And it's I feel so so sad. I once wrote an article in the newspapers. I think about it's it's really bad. So yeah. I hope even at the national level, we need to address bullying in Kenyan high schools yes. because that's where we destroy our boys most yeah. of the time. Yeah. yeah, and we had we had we, we touched base on this uh, in an earlier conversation about this, and we'll probably have another session about that. Um, but yeah, yeah. go on. Because there, 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 this, 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 this personality traits that are they are emotional, they are this, they are kind, and you go and meet a bully who comes from also a dysfunctional home. Mm. They are they are totally crushed, and so from there they decide, oh, to be a man is to be tough. Okay, mm. I need to wear. And then they start moving around in a cage. Mm. You know, I'm a tough man. And this cage is the male ego. Mm. Mm. And then you go on and get married and you're moving in your cage. You know, I'm tough. Yeah. And, and women now are like, no, come on. I want a mm. human being. Let's relate at a human level. Yeah. And yeah. You can't understand why, yeah. um, you know, I provide, I protect, I mm. what? I, you know, yes. Of 1950, and she said, <laughs> "No, I. We need to relate, you know. Mm. You know, yeah. love. So, yeah. And 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 also, we don't want to take that to our children. So, personality traits is one place, uh, and developing, and helping our children develop just positive, this personality and gender gender role. You know, destroying these binaries. Mm. You know, but it's a that you're either A or B, you know, there's, um, you can't be, there's no in between, there's no middle ground, there's no gray area. Exactly. And even in this scholarship on femininities and masculinity, the Okonkos were dominant masculinity. Mm. And the, this kind of men now who are kind and they are not, you know, they're emotional, that's, it's seen as a less dominant masculinity. Mm. But that's what, in the new age, people want people who have a balance. I and mean, for me, when it's not either or, it's just be human, a human yeah. being. Yeah. 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 I, I think, I think we're, we're, you know, and, you know, I, I completely agree with you, Joki. You know, um, for a lot of men, the idea of uh, being, you know, being emotional, being more in, in touch, being less um, macho and masculine uh, might sound like we're trying to say that, you know, we're trying to make you be like, uh, like, like women, you know. Um, and even that in itself, that statement in itself is, is part of the, 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 the issue where we see certain traits as being associated with certain genders. But what we're saying basically is we, we, we want to encourage people to embrace their nature. Um, yeah. And even for our children, for our sons, you know, we, we want them to, to express themselves. We don't want to now put a box, put them in a box and say, don't do that mm -hmm. because men don't do that. 
rather yeah. if he's inclined in a certain way. And there's nothing wrong with a, a, a young boy being this uh, guy who likes to, to jump around, wants to play soccer, wants to do all this sort of boyish, almost manly stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, yeah. we, we can't now say that, you know, do not do certain things because, mm-hmm. you know, that's uh, women do that. Do not feel certain things. I, I like your example. Do not cry or do not show any emotion because that's a, a girly thing to do because that reinforces the, 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 the patriarchy. It reinforces uh, this gender uh, um, definitions, which then, like we've seen, leads all the way towards uh, inequality in society. And so as much as we're trying to fight these inequalities out there, we need to start in our homes with our own, with our, with our own children and, and, and especially with our sons. You know, I, yeah. I, I find that we, we, sometimes we excuse some of the things that our sons do because, you know, mm-hmm. that's what boys do. Boys are like that. Um, yeah, yet we set like a, a bar for, for, for our girls. You know, our girls are, are trained to a certain degree and they're expected to deliver at a certain level. But boys are given mm-hmm. sort of a pass. Like, you know, it's okay. Boys, boys are like that. You know, if it's, yeah. it's messy, that's how boys are. It's, and all that is just reinforcing this whole gender uh, bias, uh, which ultimately leads to inequality. Yeah. Yeah, and it also makes life difficult for you as a man because you become dysfunctional. Mm. You know, you'll be you'll be even the CEO of uh, I don't know Microsoft or Facebook, but at home you're like you can't cope with people who force you to look at yourself. You know, mm. or people who are so close, it becomes very hard. But you're very good in superficial stuff you know your work sports football you are the best you know everything in european league yeah yeah but looking at your own self and so it even becomes very hard to be a good father because also when you're in touch with yourself is when you become a better father you know you want to from being a father like that generation of of the the fathers in the past who are just mm. providers, providers you want to be, you know, you want to be a friend to your to your son. Yes. How can you be a friend if you have not also you you are not dealing with your own internal struggles and you can actually sit with him with vulnerability and say, I did not do well on this. Most mm. men cannot even say even to their wives. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's not it's not manly to do. To say sorry, you know. And so how do you even teach this son to be a human? Because in the world we are in, if you don't have these social skills to apologize and to apologize with sincerity, yeah. you know, to be vulnerable, to to say I have failed, mm-hmm. I have failed, or you know, I'm broken, or I need to work on this area of myself. Yeah. Men invest so much, many even women, but mainly men, we invest so much in our careers. Yeah. But we invest very when somebody says, Oh, come, let us hear a webinar, or let's go for counseling. Many will mm. say, No, 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 I can do yeah, it. I can do it. I'm, I can hack. I can okay, I got this. I got this. No need. I don't need help. And we do that with even with our sons. That's what we expect our sons to do. You know, we kind of tell them, you know, you exactly. figure it out. Figure it out. You know, if you're if he's struggling or if he's uh, somewhere is stuck somewhere, you're like Ah, you're a man, you'll figure it out. And we just let him go with very little guidance, very little support um, from us. As like a we- yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we, we are, um, I hope, are we, are we still, are you still there, Jockey? Um, you're still there? Okay. Okay, so we're, we're kind of, like, just like we, we predicted, uh, we're running out of time and we are like halfway through this, the discussion. But, um, this is something yeah. we can talk for hours on, and I don't want to take too long. We promised guys yeah. we'll do it for about an hour. There's a couple of questions that have come through on the on the Facebook Live, um, and maybe we can maybe take a couple of them. Um, Brian has asked something about gender roles. We've kind of t- touched on that. Um, Kathy's asking about uh, educa- the education system and how that plays a role in propagating uh, gender prejudice. Yeah, so. Yes. What, what do you think? How, how do we address the education system um, and what that does for, for this whole uh, gender bias entrenchment? Yeah, and it reminds me of our first 
primary school book you remember was it hello mm. children <laughs> yes hello <laughs> Takamau goes to work. I think he was a bus driver. Yes. You know? Yes, I remember that story. And Mrs. Kamau was staying at home, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? I have in the, academy, in the academy anyway who, who research on those kind of things. But you can see, even we were only six year old, seven year old, that was our earliest literature of mm. man should be and a woman should be, Mr. Kamau and Mrs. Kamau. Mm. You know? Mm. The education system propagates, of course, and 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 uh, what do you call it? So it poses those gender roles even more strongly. And I hope even when they do the curriculum review now, they actually it would have, it would be nice to show Mrs. Kamau as the bus driver, you know, mm. and even Mr. Kamau is staying at home so that we. I'm not saying just that. Let's have both, where Mr. Kamau in class one is driving the bus and Mrs. Kamau is staying at home and in class two, Mr. Yeah. Kamau is now the bus driver. So that we can, we can, because the brain is very, the imprints at a young age are very, very powerful. Mm. Also, it goes to math. The way people think girls don't understand math. Yeah. So even teachers, They'll be, they'll, you'll see a teacher at a very young age concentrating a lot on boys. On the boys. And so that's why such a difference in STEM. Mm -hmm. You know, in science, women yeah. are lagging so much behind. So yeah. it's also as parents for you to recognize that. Even when you buy toys, the first toys for your boy, you buy him a big car, a gun. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you buy your daughter? A Barbie doll. Mm -hmm. So it's time we started thinking about gender roles and reading about them. This conversation we're having is only a tester. Yeah. The internet is powerful. You can yes. read so much. You know, buy your son a doll and a big car mm -hmm. as toys, you know. Mm -hmm. Buy your daughter a phone so that it's like, oh, okay, I could be both. Of course, when it goes to neighbors, the neighbors, if the neighbors are not switched on, they'll be like, oh, Konadoli, come on, come on, China. That's, that's like, that's, it'll crush yeah. him, it'll be such he'll a, he'll be, so be, yeah. He'll be so embarrassed, and that's why we need also to be careful how we do this, and also as parents, it's for, of course, parents, I mean, children, big parents are about this, to tell them, look, they don't know what they're missing or something, but you also have to be, also, I think, take your own education on these kind of things, or even when they grow older, and they, yeah. they're not likely to be crushed by such an experience where they can say, why not? You know, yeah. maybe yeah. when they're teenagers, it's, uh, you can be able to, to change gender roles, change domestic behavior, so it's not like you, the boys come with go fix the car. You, mm. the girls, stay with your mom and cook. No. Yeah, yeah. Say today is a day and you call everybody, girls, yeah. boys. Yeah, yeah. Let's all cook. Or let's all go to the garage or let's fix something, all of us. You know. Exactly. So yeah. then girls and boys learn there is nothing I cannot do. And so that girl, she's going to be your next scientist. Yeah. You yeah. Know, she's going to be your next engineer because yeah. you gave her a chance to be you know, I remember growing up, my dad he used to talk politics all the time, and I was mm. there every day, sitting newspapers, you know, like him and this, you know, engaging. And I remember once I read that he's saying, oh, You're always sitting around, go and stay with the women. Mm. Because you know, I now have a PhD in politics and international study. Wow. Because wow. I was like, to sit in those spaces. Those gatherings. Yeah. I mean, your dad. Uh, was a pioneer in breaking that gender mold. So kudos to him. Good stuff. Yeah. yeah. I don't think he was that deliberate, but uh, <laughs> he, he, I mean, he, he was, uh, he, I, I, I thank him for, for, also, for not sure. There was never a limit. I was never told, you know, you stop here now. I've read yeah. too much. You yeah, know. here and no further. Stop. Or, exactly. No, no, no. It was always like, Come on, you know, the world is your oyster. Keep going. What yeah. do you need? We can. So we need to do that. Yeah. Okay. To nurture boys' potential. Yeah. 
I completely agree, Joki. We're, we're like flat out of time now. I think we're, we're, we're almost done. Um, there's a couple of questions that have come through. Someone's asking about uh, this whole rites of passage. Joseph is asking about rites of passage and how some of these uh, negative stereotypes are being entrenched during these rites of passage. Um, you know, and there's a couple of other questions up along that line. I, I, we really have to wrap up and we can continue this conversation again in another session. Um, I just want to give you just a minute, just maybe to give sort of like a wrapping up or um, a, a parting shot. Um, and if you're able to address the rights of passage issue, you can do so. So what, what are your, what's your parting shot? What did you say yeah. to, a, to a father out there who's having to contend with this new way of thinking um, based on what we've discussed so far? Okay, so maybe looking at the right of passage quickly, I, I totally, I think we need to focus on this right of passage um, culturally because in actually, and I like that, most of these gender roles, they are ascribed during, for instance, circumcision for those communities who do uh, the circumcision, say around, is it 14 or 15? Yeah, that's where boys, somebody who was just an, you know, a nice boy feeling the world and living his world like a human being is told, you're even told you don't, the way you say yes, you mm. know, a boy is one who has, I mean, a man now, because now you're transiting to be a man. Yeah. In those circumstances, parties or whatever, especially in rural areas. Yeah. That's where people are told, just rural areas, even in among the middle class, because eventually, increasingly now the middle class are saying, let's go back to our roots, you know? Mm, yes. So you get an uncle from the village who comes and tells your son, now you're a man. This is a little boy, he doesn't even know, hey man, okay. Yeah, you're a man, you don't cry, and he's given a script, you don't mm. cry. Uh, women, women, you know, women are not to be negotiated with. Or, mm. You know, you don't, you don't stay in the kitchen, mm. and a woman, you know, yeah, they're given very false ideas half the time about about the women and children of today yeah. you know and so we need to start thinking and i like many church initiatives but i hope they can bring the psychological part also because mm. yes, they are good with, you know you're a good christian now what but we also need like papa bear to also move to those places to start telling boys one day you know and also i think these are still young boys 14 you can nurture them in a, in a mm. good way. You know, you don't, you're not a man with yeah. responsibility at 14, but sadly these rites of passage, and, they, and many men I find, they, are really, they still hang on to what they were told during yeah. that circumstance, mm. yeah. which doesn't work. And that's where they even cultivate this ego, because and, and I pity men because then there are these conflicted human beings moving beyond the beauty of their culture and then they move into the work world or the modern world and they have to be these other different human beings. And that's why you find men so broken many times, but they don't even know. And, but they, it will manifest through alcoholism mm. or all you think about is football, but can't relate on other things, you know, superficial stuff, because you're refusing to deal with how many of these things have have impacted on us, and to heal, so healing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so, that in short. Okay. Yeah, I think, what what did you ask, by the way? I know it's about what's the part in short, but you asked a question I need to yeah. relate no, no. to the answer. So I was just asking, you know, uh, maybe in parting, you could uh, you could um, advise uh, someone who's who's watching or who will watch this later. Uh, you're, a, you're a, he's a father, and um, you know, society has put him in a box, um, and he doesn't know any other way to 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 father. And here we are talking about changing gender roles. It's a paradigm shift. Um, how do we? How would you address yeah. that 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 man? What would you tell him to to to, to do? What would your imparting your your advice be to that man? Uh, first, I need to tell him thank. I need to thank, not really thank him, but to appreciate that they are first on the journey. Whether if they are watching this or if they are reading up stuff on the internet, if they are they're in a peer group, they have started, and I think that is very important. Starting, 
it's not going it's not easy because it's like i'm doing every not i'm doing and learning so much we have learned so much our person especially male personality is hinged on this so it's like telling me who am i now if i put my ego developed or my whatever this these gender roles i have picked along the way on the side they, it, it, it's actually a very difficult thing and i empathize and i just say uh, be easy on yourself it's a journey it's a journey all of us we grow up, we grew up in a very patriarchal system we've had to learn and it's a journey even for women yeah. you know for you to be a woman who doesn't always conform to these gender stereotypes it's a, it's painful because many times or, or even as a man you'll go to places and people are like you're weird you know or you're living in a strange way but that just keep going on get up here group keep reading there's so much now we cannot i i our parents did not have the power of the internet like we do yeah so they we can forgive them for for anything they were but for us the internet is here books you don't even need to register anywhere you just need to open your phone and there's so much knowledge so mm. be easy on yourself you are on a journey and we it's it's actually it's you actually benefit most because if one day you live up to 90 years mm. you need to i always ask myself or i always ask yourself what will you regret not having done or do you want to live a life where you never live to your full full potential and i don't mean as a ceo or as a whatever real estate investor and the, to realize the full potential of your emotions and yeah. taking that to children yeah yeah in terms of your even as your full potential as a human being um, and the kind of relationships that you, yeah. you could nurture or could develop over, yeah. over your life okay Thank you. Thank you so much, Joki. Exactly. I mean, we've learned so much today. I'm sorry I'm rushing you. We, we're just we're like flat out of time. Uh, I, I think um, this is obviously a conversation which needs to go on uh, in, in the future. But I think it's very powerful. I've learned a lot of things myself. I think it's also kind of jarring for me a bit because, you know, changing the way I've grown up uh, and doing things differently as a, as, a, as a man, which is in conflict with what I've always learned or always known or seen growing up is it's a paradigm i mean it's a paradigm shift and you know, I, I need to learn it as well i think we are we're not saying you know that uh we want to con uh, mix everybody up and you know, not to have any distinctions between the genders what we're saying is that we need to be aware of some of the, the negative um gender constructs which are, are causing us constructs i've said constructs yeah. like where i come from uh which are causing yeah. all these uh these inequalities that are happening in society and as, as, as fathers, we can, we can play a role in doing that right now. Some of it involves unlearning some of the, the, un, um, the unfavorable uh, gender roles that have been given to us or passed down to us by our parents and being able to look at them and say, does this work? Does this make sense? And pass on the right values to our children. Not just pass it on wholesale and say, this is how men are, this is how fathers are. We need to critically assess everything, critically look at everything and be able to decide what works um, for the, 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 the parenting that we are in today, the society that we're in today, and not just accept uh, gender biases on the face of it. Um, so yeah, I mean, just to, to everybody, you know, you, you, you obviously have to make up your own mind about what we're hearing. Um, you know, uh, Joki, um, as an expert, has, has done this. This is something that she does professionally. She has a professional opinion based on years of research and work. Um, you as a father also have to make up your mind. You as a mother uh, dealing with uh, your sons or your, or your daughters, you also have to make some decisions regarding what is your, your gender role and how, what gender roles are you going to pass on to your children. But yeah, I'm happy to, to hear more about the conversation. Uh, Joki, if people want to reach out to you, how can they, how can they reach you? Uh, are you on social media? Are you... Yeah, tell us. Yes, they can. They can get me on Twitter at Joki Wamai, and it's Wamai with an I. Okay, good stuff. So please do that. Uh, she's also on Facebook. Uh, this is obviously live on Facebook, so I'm sure you, you'll see her link there. And I'll, I'll post it at the end of this video. Um, and yeah, if you want to carry on this conversation, uh, if you're on this video, you obviously know uh, Papa Bear and you know what we do. Uh, you can reach out to us, Papa Bear Kenya, on 
Instagram, on Twitter, um, no, on Instagram, on Facebook, and on YouTube. Please feel free. Uh, personally, I'm also on, on all those platforms, uh, M. Mutiga. So let's keep this conversation going and let's see what we can do to encourage exceptional fatherhood, which is the goal. So thank you all. Um, thanks for joining us and uh, have a lovely evening. Thank you, Joki. Uh, look forward to having a conversation with you again sometime soon. Thank you, everybody. I enjoyed this. Yeah, all right.